Hey everyone, Chris Matson here. In this video, I will show you my CAD strategy for modeling the front cover of the Braun ET66 calculator. Let's do it. As you know from the last video, we start the strategy by breaking down the complex part into simple shapes that can be modeled in the CAD system. Now, when we're creating a CAD model of an existing part, as we are doing in this exercise, the engineering drawing, or if we have it, the physical part, is where we will find the details that are needed to make that solid CAD model. On the other hand, when we're creating an original part, an original design, we turn to our own hand sketches and simple prototypes and possibly even competitive parts uh, to make measurements and to understand how the complex shape can be best broken into its simple CAD modelable shapes. To make a CAD strategy, get out a piece of paper and a pencil and start sketching the 2D shapes that make up the calculator. Since you can't sketch all the features at the same time, you will naturally break the part down into its simpler shapes. When I did this, I tried to think primarily in terms of the following CAD operations, extrusions, cuts, fillets, and chamfers. If you don't know what these are, I recommend that you go to the guidebook glossary where you find all of these things described. Thinking about it in terms of operations required me to think about which operations I would do first and which I would do second and so on. My very rough approach emerged in this first sketch, which I plan to make the overall outside shape, then hollow out the backside, then make the cuts around the edges, then add a buttonhole and pattern it, make then a cutout for the LCD window and chamfer the edges, add support ribs around the large buttons, add all the posts, add details around the smaller buttons, and add the LED support ribs. And then finally, add in the details around the battery area. Now with that rough view of my strategy, I jumped one layer deeper into uh, the actions I would need to take to create the solid CAD model. And here's the strategy that emerged. Step one, make a basic extrude based on the overall dimensions, the length, the width, and the height. Now I put the right plane right down the center of the part and the top plane at the very top of the part. And I did this to facilitate mirroring across the right plane. And also I put the top plane at the top because many of the dimensions in the engineering drawing reference the top of the calculator. And since it's better to dimension to a reference plane, I decided to make sure that that top plane was right at the top. It would make it go faster if I did it that way. Step two, add the fillets at the corners. Step three, flip the calculator over in my head right, and hollow out the backside. Step four, put grooves around the edges. Step five, cut one large circle for the button and then pattern it. Step six, cut the two small buttonholes. Step seven, cut the LCD window. Step eight, add the window chamfers, noticing that there are two different chamfers around that window. Step nine, flip the calculator over and add support ribs around the large buttonhole. Now notice that I made one strategy for getting those ribs and then realized that it would produce the wrong geometry so I changed it. This is no big deal. In fact, the strategy is just a plan and we want that plan to guide us, but we need to know that that plan might need to change. And in this case, I realized right there during the strategy creation that it needed to change. So I just crossed it out and changed it. This is exactly what we wanna have happen with our strategies. Now the same thing will happen when I jump into the actual solid CAD modeling. I will run into a problem with my strategy and I'll adjust but the strategy itself got me going down the right path. So in my revised plan, I would cut one side and then use a circular pattern to make two of the other cuts, and then I would do a completely new cup, cut for the wider slot. I would then pattern this entire set of operations to all of the, big, uh, all of the large buttonholes on this top cover. Step 10, 
extrude one of the large posts on the back side and then pattern it as needed. Step 11, extrude all of the other posts and do whatever mirroring would be needed to get things from the left side to the right side or vice versa. Step 12, create three rectangular extrusions near the LCD window. Step 13, create all the other support ribs near the window. These are support ribs for the LCD. Step 14, create the basic battery holder shape as a full circle. And step 15, create the rectangular features under the battery holder circle. And then step 16, cut away material to produce the angular cutout that's in there. And then 17, cut out the large area near the top of the calculator, which uh, we can see from the drawings is not as thick as the other parts. Step 18, create a reference plane in between the two small button holes so that features can be added to one of the holes and then mirrored across that plane to the other hole. Step 19, actually create those features around the small hole and mirror them. Step 20, create the slots around the side of the front cover. Do this just on one side and then mirror it across the right plane. These slots are used to hold the front and back cover together with snaps on them. And then 21, the last step, create the slots on the bottom of the calculator and do this by making one slot cut and then patterning. Those are my steps. From what you can see, before I even opened up the CAD system, I had a very good idea of what needed to be done to create this part as a solid CAD model. How did I come to that understanding? It was by reading the drawings, trying to understand the drawings, trying to visualize the drawings, and breaking up that complex part into simple parts, and then sketching out how I would do those simple parts. That is the CAD strategy. Okay, a few things to keep in mind relative to CAD strategies. I showed you one CAD strategy, and I believe that CAD strategy will work but there are multiple CAD strategies that could be put together and followed to create this part. Now, don't get me wrong, there's also a lot of strategies that will lead you astray. Another thing to notice is that when I made mistakes during my CAD strategy, I just fixed them. And this is one of the beauties of working with paper and pencil, is just scratch it out and do another one. Now, the same kind of thing is gonna happen when I jump into the CAD system and begin the solid CAD modeling. I'm gonna run into some problems, those problems are gonna require me to adjust my plan, and that's okay. I'll just handwrite a few other things uh, and be ready to go. The CAD strategy points us in the right direction. Without it, you will wander, and it will take longer to do the solid CAD modeling. I spent 20 minutes putting together this CAD strategy for the ET66 uh, front cover. I normally like to spend about 10 minutes doing CAD strategies, but for this part, it's incredibly detailed and there was a lot to think through. So I think it justified spending a little bit more time. Now what? You need to create a CAD strategy. You need to get in the practice of creating these CAD strategies and decomposing that product from its complex shapes into its simple shapes. Now you can use my CAD strategy as a guide, but I highly recommend that you hand sketch out the steps. When you sketch out those steps, you will come to a greater understanding about what this part is and how it is created. And so that's what I recommend that you do. I wish you the best on that. In the next video, I'm gonna give you some tips on doing the CAD modeling for this complex part. I believe it will help you, those tips will help you from going down some 